Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Rocks and another open with me, but for the Monday Book Club this time. So this time I'm going to look at this book. It's called Boho Crochet, 30 Glorious Colourful Projects Inspired by Traditional Folk Style. And it is, well, it says Contributing Editor, Marinka Slump. So I don't know what Contributing Editor means. But um, normally they're just patterns by, but that's a little bit different. OK, so moving on then. Um, contribute an editor. I don't know. Anyway, it's by Apple Books. And it's nice and crisp, this one. So we've got some pictures of what we're likely to expect. And here's our contents. Ah, so there's several designers. That's why. The designers... The Project Selector, Crochet for the Home, Crochet Fusion, Crochet Techniques, Useful Information, the used, Yarns Used in the Projects Index, blah, blah, blah. So, Yarns Used in the Projects, no good on going, is it? Because they get discontinued. Might as well not put that section in. Um, lots of dressing that don't need to be there. I suppose you need to credit the designers, but you could do that on each and every design you could say buy. So this goes on about who they all are. Ah, oh, okay, project selector. This isn't bad, it's like a big index of pictures and it will tell you where to find them. So it gives you a little like, uh, idea of what to expect in the whole book. I don't know how many pages this goes on for, just that one. Okay, so yeah, there are 30, aren't there? I think I remember seeing. Uh, crochet for the home okay so we've got a delightful array of beautiful colors and boho projects so we've got vintage fan ripple blanket they're quite tall aren't they i say it's vintage but i've never seen that pattern before in my entire life so um i don't think it's vintage unless it was a pattern i've never seen which is very unusual now, this one's called the Annie Blanket, and it is very similar looking to the one that I made. Um, well, I made two of these. The I can't remember what I called them now, but they're rainbow blankets. If I can remember, I'll put a link to them at the end. They are very similar, my two, but one was made with different colours and one was made with just two yarns. But it does look like it. It's not it, but it does look like it. Daisy Baby Blanket just making a, a blanket out of the different colour kind of daisy squares. That's quite pretty. And it goes on for a couple of pages. I don't know why, because if you remember my <laughs> my daisy pattern, it was very just one short video. And I think, you know, we know how to do this, don't we? But then it does go on to do finishing, joining, obviously, and border. So maybe that's why. Colour wheel hexagon blanket. Just granny hexagons, really, aren't they? I mean, you can get up close with them, but they are granny hexagons. Pretty, though. I like what they've done with the colour. Happy Colours Blanket, which is this one. Just different coloured um, rounds going into a square. But what I like is these big ones. Um, you don't often get that on these blankets. Usually they're just all this sort of uniform size. Um, and there's the how to do. That's what it looks like overall. And I think these big ones do break it up. But I can see just by looking at them that they've not staggered where the joins are. And they are taking on a hexagon shape. School book error. Just saying. This is Flower Power Runner. Okay, so you can put this on your bed or a table. Depends how big you make it. So you can be on the you know, at the bottom of your bed runner. And this is the Star Fruit Rug. Mm. Actually, I quite like that. I do, but I'm not sure I like this kind of edging. I guess it depends. That could grow on me, actually. Not bad. I like what they did with the colour, how they kind of used the colours to kind of merge to the next one. I did a similar thing with a very big rainbow stroller blanket once but it kind of got taken by my grandson tyler like all the blankets do but yeah i quite like this one that's uh that's cool 
These are large granny square pillows. So you can just make a big granny square. I don't really think you need a tutorial for that one. But then you've got these ones. I like the little chevron -y one at the bottom there. It's unusual. So this is the sunflower motif pillow. I think these are just, over the next pages then, we're going to see these three cushions made. I do like that one. It's not great, but, you know, it sort of does something a little different from the norm. And this is a round pillow. Again, looks a bit hexagonal. Just saying. This is called the spoke mandala, and that looks very fetching. What are you guys? Perhaps you can put it in the comments section. What do you use mandalas for? Do you just put them up as maybe a window kind of, you know, display? Decoration, that's the word I'm looking for. Do you just use them as placemats, um, maybe coasters underneath a fruit bowl? What do you do with your mandalas? Because I often see mandala kind of tutorials and mandala patterns. And um, I don't know what to do with them, to be honest. I guess that's what most people do with them. But that's how to do the Pico Edge. Uh, what's this? Does that have a... Pico Edge Mandala. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought it was a Pico Edge for the other one. So, to be honest, this is just not a mandala. That is just a big circle. Just saying. Mandalas, to me, have a bit of definition. So, this is the mandala stool cover or mandala, whatever you want to say. In other words, round. Let's just call it round, you know. Let's, let's call it what it is. But this one does actually have kind of what I would call mandala because it has different things going on and there it is the stool cover and that's fine if you've got a stool that size I guess heart and flower motifs so these are quite cute if you want to sort of put stuff on sew things on I guess you could always take something you like here and turn it into a circle or a square or a circle then a square like move on with it so that's kind of pretty they've made this sort of design that looks wreath like you know i feel about unless it's christmas i wouldn't really entertain it crochet christmas baubles they don't look much like christmas baubles to me they look more like toys for children but um if you did them in christmasy kind of colors then i guess maybe they would be or oh, something sparkly but that's what they've called them anyway. Christmas baubles. Butterfly pot holders. And they're quite cute. Although, I think personally, for a butterfly, this one looks like this is a bit longer. But I like to have one that is bigger. Because otherwise it just looks like a pattern, really. You know, traditional butterflies, they have a bigger wing at the bottom. Just me being a bit tad picky. But, yeah, do you think it looks like a butterfly? I kind of think it does once they've put the extra bits on. But, again, they're still the same size. I always think of butterfly wings as being slightly bigger on the bottom. And the, Or the top. Is it the top? I might have my butterflies upside down. I don't know. Lace crochet coasters. Basically, they are a kind of a granny round. Pretty, though. And a cafetiere cosy. Okay. Now, I thought about doing one of these. I thought about doing several things like this for my channel for little tutorials. But you've got a handle there, so you're going to have to do it up somehow. And I thought, well, over time, it's going to kind of stretch and give. Unless you use cotton, I suppose. But I never did get round to it. I was going to do that. never did. And here we go. Look, they've got this cup cosy. I don't know if that Velcro in there or what, but I don't know if I could be bothered to put that on every time I have a cup of tea. I don't know. Probably not. It's one of those things I think that gets consigned to the drawer. So we've got some fingerless gloves, some whatever they are, um, a pencil case. I don't know if they're bothered putting a zip on that one. Uh, some flowers, something or other. And um, bag, I guess that is. Bag. Okay. Drops of colour headband. There you go. It didn't really scream headband at me, I must say. 
but there you go that's what it is and these are floral hair grips so you can just put a grip through it those little flowers and what we got the rainbow wrist cuffs these do up with buttons they either yeah they do that's a different one isn't it a bit unusual i'm not being funny but i don't think my patience could um put those i'd have to sort of slip them on and make those buttons just purely for decoration because i don't think you know i could button all those up every time i want to go out there must be decoration surely i don't know though it's definitely an opening we have a slouch hat i'm not sure if i'm keen on hats that have got big kind of granny patterns and there it is in its glory some people must love them though oh did i miss the beginning of dancing hearts wrap dancing hearts well where are the hearts then where where are the hearts not quite sure on that one. Oh, hang on maybe these are what they yeah look little tiny they're kind of almost heart shaped dancing hearts wild flower scarf yeah moving on Ombre string cowl. Whoa. No. I don't think I could do all this bit. Not for me. But, you know, there may be some people out there that will love this. But all, all of this, no, it's just really, no. No, 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 no. Blossom necklace. Okay, so that's a necklace. Granny square clutch bag. I thought it was a pencil case. It's got pencil sticking out of it. Surely it's a pencil case. Whatever. Uh, mobile phone and tablet covers. They're pretty ordinary, aren't they? Most of us have made something like that at some point, I think. Now, this is a star backpack. So called because it has stars here. But it's a V-stitch, I think. And there's the back. I feel like this would get really baggy and stretched, wouldn't you? the weekender bag now that's quite unusual I quite like the design of that one and they've got a large bag and a small bag to make there you go there they are that's all the chart look a chart you know i love charts quite a lot of pages for that one crochet techniques so we're already at the end of patterns getting started oh my goodness what a waste of um, a bit of book, you know. I don't think anybody's going to buy this book and say no already. Stitches. Increasing and doing I think, you know what, this is just a bit of padding in a book to me. Because I don't think I would bother buying a book that needed to teach me how to do the stuff that's in it. Just useless pages. Sorry if I'm being overcritical there, but, to, you know, they don't realise when they're doing these things. We don't need that. If we've bought the book, we know what they're doing. Well, we would hope that we would know what we were doing. So a bit about reading patterns, which might be useful. Um, useful information, is it? Maybe. Um, yarns used in the project is a bit of a waste of time because yarns get discontinued. Since I've been doing my... My shop, hobbybox.co.uk, I know more than most about favourite yarns getting discontinued. I mean, before when I was just a consumer, I'd maybe find one now and then that got discontinued. But now I'm kind of like, oh, that one's coming to an end. It's like, no, why? So anyway, there's the index. This is the book. Tell me what you think of this. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that sometimes they just slap the word boho on something. Because they think it's, oh, people are going to buy that because it's boho. It's like things being called buffalo. Mm. Buffalo wings, buffalo whatever, mozzarella. <laughs> Is it made out of buffalo? From a buffalo? Maybe you can educate me on that one. But you know what I mean? I just think if they slap the word boho on it, we all think, oh, this is trendy. This is edgy. You can see my uh, label there has been peeled off. 
So uh, anyway, <laughs> I can't remember how much it sent me back, but obviously the right price of it is twelve ninety nine. There you go, twelve ninety nine. Is it um is it worth twelve ninety nine? I obviously didn't pay that. I got it in a sale, massive saving. Can't remember what it was now. Uh, and I tried to get rid of the label because it was unsightly, but it didn't work. It was far too stuck, which is an annoying thing in itself when you buy something. Maybe if you wanted to buy something as a gift and now you're stuck with this on it. Sometimes labels are just way too adhesive and I think they do it on purpose. So shoplifters can't pick it off. <laughs> but why would you pick up a sale a sale sticker <laughs> and pay the right price you wouldn't would you so i think you know sometimes they don't think about whether we would want it there permanently and the stickers are too too much anyway that's this week's monday book club tell me what you think of it and um i will see you on the next one if you haven't already i keep forgetting to say this don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell thank you for watching bye for now